Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to kind of this week's Walking Together. Um, I spoke last week about mercy, and it was a bit messy. It was very messy, and it was cut off before the end. So we decided to re-record. So I pray that it's a real blessing to you, and that God really touches you in this whole area of mercy and of kindness. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your kindness. And I pray that you would deliver the strength and the comfort and the hope that comes from your mercy, from your kindness, and from the freedom that it brings. Just move, Lord, through what we share today. I pray that your spirit would bring life. Amen. Amen. So this week I'm, I'm looking at Psalms 123 and 124. So I'm going to read 123. I lift my eyes to you, O God, enthroned in heaven. We keep looking to the Lord our God for his mercy, just as servants keep their eyes on their master, as a slave girl watches her mistress for the slightest signal. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy, for we have had our fill of contempt. We have had more than our fill of the scoffing of the proud and the contempt of the arrogant. Mercy. What is mercy? It's a gentleness, a s generosity. Mercy is generous. Mercy stoops down to lift up. Mercy is kind. The Oxford Dictionary says, Mercy is compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is it within one's power to punish or harm. Mercy. In the Old Testament, there was um, a, a, a thing called Jubilee. So many years, after so many years, people were set free from things and the whole meaning of jubilee was instead of finding a judge you found a savior jesus came to be our jubilee to set us free so that we could have a savior instead of a judge and that's very much part of mercy it's just goodness not because we've earned it just because the giver is good mercy can never be earned mercy comes from a kind and a generous and a loving heart David said, when my father and mother forsake me, you will take me up. And he also said, your gentleness has made me great. And there's a lot of room to grow in mercy. Arrogance and the things that we read of, arrogance and scoffing, they diminish us. But mercy, mercy comes underneath us and around us and it gives us room to grow the gentleness and the kindness and the love of God. It's good soil to grow in. And the kindness and the encouragement of people that love us enables us to be all that we were meant to be. Mercy. We all need mercy because none of us is enough. It's not earned. It isn't like a royal pardon that you receive just once. We become... We come to the place where we say, please forgive me, and we turn our back on our old life. And yes, there are decisions to make along the way, but it, that point of salvation comes once. But mercy, mercy is there for us every day. It isn't like the life sentence is removed once, and then it's just whatever comes. Mercy is there for every day and for every situation and we need it every day. It gives you the grace to go forward. You've already been pardoned. That pardon has been given. It's been freely given. You are pardoned. You don't have to keep coming for pardon every day. Yes, if you make a mistake or you make a wrong choice, confess it and receive forgiveness. But because of mercy, it's there so freely. And sometimes it isn't that we've done wrong, it's just that we're not enough. We need mercy. We're weary. We need mercy. We feel weak. We need mercy. 
So many things we don't understand. We need mercy. So many times we need mercy. And God gives it freely. I, I want to read you a quote. And if you've not heard last week's transmission, then I think you'll never guess who it was from. I thought it was so lovely. <coughs> I am a most noteworthy sinner, but I have cried out to the Lord for grace and mercy, and they have covered me completely. I have found the sweetest consolation since I made it my whole purpose to enjoy his marvelous presence. And the person that said that was Christopher Columbus. I didn't know that he had that kind of a, a knowledge of God. It's a fantastic understanding. I am a most noteworthy sinner, but I have cried out to the Lord for grace and mercy, and they have covered me completely. I have found the sweetest consolation since I made it my whole purpose to enjoy his marvelous presence. So many people that have achieved great things in God, I guess every one of them really, has been so aware of the mercy of God and that they couldn't have done what God called them to do if it wasn't for the mercy of God. Many of them felt that without, well, they knew that without God, their past would just disqualify them. So they received the grace and mercy and the forgiveness. And God did amazing things through their lives. If we need somebody's mercy, then we're vulnerable to them. We need God's mercy. And we need a heart that's open to him. You can't receive mercy from behind a big wall. You have to be open for the mercy to really do you good. If you're struggling, if you're striving, if you're pretending, all those things, it just gets in the way of mercy. You need to be vulnerable. You need to be open. You need to be humble to receive both kindness and mercy. Because your walls, they just simply, they get in the way. Completely get in the way. Do I need mercy? We all need mercy. We need mercy because we're not enough. None of us by ourselves is enough. We need mercy to grow. We need mercy to flourish. We need that gentleness. We need grace to enable us to do the things that are beyond our strength, beyond our ability and our understanding. We need grace, but we need mercy too. That smile of God, that gentle lifting up, mercy always lifts up. Mercy <coughs> has a heart to lift you up, to lift you up. It talks in that psalm about looking to God like a slave or a servant girl. And that kind of language it isn't very popular nowadays because there's been such an abuse of people. But when the master is such a good master, we can give him such devotion and we can be so free in our desire to serve him. We're what the Bible calls bond slaves. We give ourselves freely because of his love and because of our love. So we're willing to look to him. We're willing to have a heart to be completely devoted, to serve him and to please him. Because he's been so good. We want to respond to him. We want to respond to his desires Service and sacrifice, they're not popular concepts nowadays. But because we've received his mercy and his grace and his love, we just want to serve him because it's the best and most exciting thing ever. And if we're not looking to him for mercy and if we're not serving him, then we'll be serving something else. 
I will be serving somebody else. Whatever it is that you're serving, you're not going to get mercy and grace the same as you'll get it from God. He's a good master. He's a good savior. He's a good friend. And the very best waiters, and you know, when you go somewhere good, they're waiting on the desires of the customer. Well, we're waiting on his desires because we want to respond to him because of his goodness and because we need him in every season and in every situation. There's, t there's tyrants. I'm sure you've seen these kinds of characters on the TV and I, I hope these people have not been in your life, but tyrants, they want you to beg for mercy. They want you to try and earn their favor. But that's not mercy. That's not mercy. And God is not a tyrant. God is a, a gentle savior, the best father ever, full of love and compassion. He's not a tyrant. He's not a tyrant. And he doesn't want us to be subject to the fear of a tyrant. It's not his heart. There's no room for that in his heart. Selfish people don't change the world because they only care about themselves. <coughs> and it's our devotion to God. It's our love for him and his love for us that enables us to make a difference. Excuse me. <coughs> we trust him to help us. And in that humility, in that honesty, we can receive and then we can give mercy. Pride can get so in the way to think that we don't need it. We'll be very condescending and give it, but we don't need it. But you'll never give it if you don't receive it. We need to receive it. We need to trust God. We need to be open and broken and receive his mercy. Sometimes when we're in the middle of things, we don't see um, the wounding that we receive. Yet again today, I've got scrapes up my arm from gardening this week. And sometimes in the middle of a battle, you don't see the wounds that you receive, wounds to our bodies, to our hearts, to our minds. And we walk through things and we receive wounds. And we need to come to a place where we receive that healing, and that healing comes through still waters, a restored soul, receiving of the mercy of God, the restoration power of the love and the kindness and the gentleness of God that pours in that oil and that wine right where we need it, into our wounds, the goodness of God, the kindness of God that lifts us up again. It says in Hebrews chapter 4, Verses 15 and 16. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all of the same testings that we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. Sometimes when we feel beaten up, we, ret we, we retreat, we go into a corner, we hide away. We don't need to do that. We need to come to God and sometimes to others as well so that they can minister the goodness of God. Sometimes God uses other people. Sometimes there aren't other people available. Sometimes God just wants to do it himself. But sometimes we need also to admit that we need each other those people that will stand alongside us and lift us up and the goodness of God that lifts us up. He's a good, good God. It says in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 10, this is from the Young's translation, it says, we who were once not a people are now the people of God. We who had not found kindness and have now found kindness. Most translations put that as mercy. In this one it says kindness. And God's mercy always comes out of a heart of kindness. It doesn't come out of a heart of impatience 
our intolerance, our disapproval, our weariness. God's mercy and kind, it always comes from kindness. His mercy comes from a kind and a generous heart, an accepting and a loving heart. That's where God's kindness is always from. And if we try to give kindness from another type of a heart, I don't know what we're giving, but it's not mercy. It's not mercy. Psalm 124. What if the Lord had not been on our side? Let all Israel repeat, what if the Lord had not been on our side when people attacked us? They would have swallowed us alive in their burning anger. The waters would have engulfed us. A torrent would have overwhelmed us. Yes, the raging waters of their fury would have overwhelmed our very lives. Praise the Lord who did not let their teeth tear us apart. We escaped like a bird from a hunter's trap. The trap is broken and we are free. Our help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Don't forget, we need mercy. Once we had no identity, now we're God's people. Once we hadn't received mercy, now we've received God's mercy. Don't forget that you needed it. Don't forget, you know, it says, what if the Lord hadn't been on our side? Remember the times when you've received his goodness. Remember the times when he's rescued you. Then when you're in a mess again, you'll know where to go to for help. <coughs> and when you see somebody else in a mess, you won't say, well, why are you there? I'm not there. We need to remember the goodness of God. We need to keep it before our face. We need to thank him. We need to be thankful for what he's done in our lives and remember that we couldn't do it by ourselves. Remember where we came from. Remember that we would have been swallowed alive. Remember that we couldn't do it on our own and then extend that to those around us. We would have been swallowed alive, like Jonah, like Jonah, kind of alive, but you can't go where you need to go and everybody else's mess is all over you. That's what it feels like to be swallowed alive. Have you ever felt like that? Jonah knew what that felt like and I know what that's felt like. You can't go where you should go, possibly because of your own stupidity. You know, we make wrong choices. We end up in a mess. And sometimes it's other people that just chuck all, st all sorts of stuff on us in the belly of that whale, swallowed alive. He had all kinds of rubbish and muck all around him. God rescues us. God, in his mercy, rescues us. God, in his mercy, sees where we're at and releases us. Sometimes we're kind of alive, but we're not going where we should be going. It talks about a snare or a trap, and that trap, that snare, it holds us, and it talks about a bird, and a bird in a snare, it can't get itself out, it needs somebody else to come and open up the teeth of that snare so that it can fly free again, and we couldn't do it by ourselves, we couldn't set ourselves free, we needed strong hands to come and pull those teeth apart. We needed strong hands to come and release us. It says, praise the Lord who did not let their teeth tear us apart. The teeth of that trap, it could have been a hurt, it can be fears, it can be rejection, it can be the fiery darts from words, you know, those fiery darts of the enemy. Things that we hear sometimes that people have said directly to us and they're like darts that find a weak spot and they penetrate right into our heart and mind and identity, those fiery darts. And sometimes they need to be pulled out. Well, always they need to be pulled out. Those darts that find a vulnerable spot. We need to be rescued. We can't do it by ourselves. We need the mercy of God. We need the kindness of others. We couldn't do it by ourselves and other people. We can't blame them. 
because they can't do it themselves. We shouldn't condemn them because they can't do it themselves. Because we couldn't either. We escaped. The trap is broken. Mercy is a virtue. If you think of virtue, you know, you think of a virtuous woman. People have talked about a virtuous woman. Um, and for some people, that looks like a Puritan in a, a grey bonnet. A very meek and mild woman. That's not what virtue looks like. Virtue is more like a warrior. Virtue. When the, the woman came to Jesus and touched his robe... He said that virtue flowed from him. Virtue is strength. Virtue empowers. And mercy is a virtue. And it's a life that flows from God and that flows between us. And it empowers us and it lifts us up from a broken place. We all need the virtue, the strength, the power, the goodness of God. Virtue, mercy is a virtue. It has life in it. It isn't just something meek and mild that pats you on the head and tries to make you feel a bit better. Virtue has power in it, power to release and power to heal. Mercy is a virtue. It has the life of God in it and it breaks bonds and it breaks captivities and it breaks rejection and fear and shame and hopelessness. It has life in it. It's like a seed of life and it bursts up. It's a torrent of life and it, it, brings, it brings just fresh life. It breaks captivity. Mercy is not meek and mild. Virtues are not meek and mild. Goodness is not passive and neither is mercy. It's the life of God. If you show mercy to somebody, you are bringing the life of God. And if you need mercy, you don't need to be ashamed of that. You just need to come openly, freely, to receive the mercy of God. It's a fabulous, glorious, shiny thing that we need to receive. It's a wealth, it's a treasure, it's a virtue, and we need it. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing, a wonderful thing. Cowards are cruel. I don't know if you've noticed, but cowards are cruel, and cruelty comes out of cowardice and meanness, whereas grace, grace is generous, grace is kind, mercy, mercy is not mean, mercy is generous, mercy is full of courage, mercy is full of life, mercy is not afraid to stoop, Cowards don't stoop. They try and lift themselves up like that tyrant that wants you to beg. But mercy stoops. I'm going to read Hebrews 4, 15 and 16 again. It says, This high priest of ours understands our weakness, for he faced all of the same feelings we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find his grace to help us when we need it most. Quite often when we need it most is the last time that we feel that we can come. But we, when we need it most, when we've really stuffed up, when we feel really weak, that's when we need his mercy most and that's when we should come. Sometimes we think they don't deserve mercy. <laughs> Why should I give them mercy? They don't deserve it. That's when they need it most. We can come to the throne of God when we need it most. When we need mercy the most is when we should run the quickest rather than running in the other direction, rather than turning to self or shame or effort or trying harder 
We need to run to the, the throne of grace, the throne of mercy, the throne of God. We need to run for help in the time of our greatest need. We don't have to deserve it. We don't have to deserve it. We just have to be honest about the fact that we need it. And not be like the servant, you know, that unjust servant. He needed huge mercy. He had a huge debt. And he wasn't afraid to say, I need mercy. But then when his fellow servant needed it, he was harsh and unforgiving. So we need to be ready to receive and ready to give. And you know, you can never give mercy from a place of pride. Whatever you're giving, it isn't mercy. The good Samaritan, when he came along, he had to get off his donkey. He had to get off his donkey. You can't give pride from an elevated position. That's why Jesus came to be one of us. He loved us so much that he came to be alongside of us. He came to be one of us. That's how great the mercy of God is. And he's willing to come right where you are and love you and sit with you and see your heart and hear you and give you his mercy. He didn't just get off his donkey. He came from the glory of heaven. And sometimes we think we can bestow mercy from an elevated place. Well, mercy always gets off its donkey. That good Samaritan, when he came along, he couldn't have ministered to that man that was beaten up by the side of the road without getting off his donkey. And we sometimes we just need to jolly well get off our donkey and get down in the dirt. Jesus was willing to do it for us. We need to do it from for each other, from a place of love from a place of grace, from a place of receiving freely and giving freely. Our help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He's been so good to us. He's been so kind to us without reluctance, without being stingy. He just gives freely. We can come and we can receive that mercy so freely and we need to give it so freely he's so willing to release us from he's not <coughs> he's not that oppressor he isn't it says over being weary we escape the trap is broken it was in the first one wasn't it We have had our fill of the scoffing of the proud and the contempt of the arrogant. We can look away from that now. That's behind. And people might still, people might still react in wrong ways. But we can receive the goodness. We need to look to God. We can freely receive that kindness and that mercy. We can receive his healing to those places that have received that scoffing from the proud. And we can receive the mercy. We can receive the love. We can receive the gentleness. No longer forsaken. No longer desolate. We are the children of God. And we can come. We can receive. We can receive because he was willing to come right to where we are, right to where we are. I want to just read that second psalm again because I believe that some of you need to receive the release of knowing that God wants to set you free from the traps that you've been in. What if the Lord had not been on our side? Let all Israel repeat. What if the Lord had not been on our side when people attacked us? They would have swallowed us alive in their burning anger. The waters would have engulfed us. A torrent would have overwhelmed us. 
Yes, the raging waters of their fury would have overwhelmed our very lives. Praise the Lord who did not let their teeth tear us apart. We escaped like a bird from a hunter's trap. The trap is broken and we are, f are free. Our help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Whatever has held you in bondage, whatever it is that has wounded you and trapped you, I just want to say the trap is broken and you are free. Whatever the wounding has been, there's mercy for you. There's grace for you. Whatever has come as a result of pride, whether your own or others, we can go to that throne. We can receive grace. We can receive mercy in our time of greatest need. Whatever's, whatever has been spoken, whatever has been done, that trap is broken. That trap is broken. This that we've talked about is part of a pilgrimage and it's a progressive thing. And sometimes as we journey on, we realize that we're not free to take the next step. This is a journey towards greater intimacy with God. And sometimes as we seek to step into new things, we become aware of the traps. We become aware of the wounds and we need to bring that just before God and say, I need your healing. I'm trapped. Rather than keep fighting and struggling and striving and trying to do it by ourselves, come and receive that mercy. Come and let him open that trap that has ensnared you. Sometimes we become aware of things that have been spoken over us or by us that have held us in bondage. You'll never. I'll never. You're not enough. You stupid thing. All kinds of things. Past failures, past regrets. They don't have to hold you anymore. God wants to bring mercy into every area of your life so that you can flourish, so that you can move forward into that enabling grace. Mercy sets you free from the past and grace enables you to go forward into fullness into future, into all that God has for you. Amen. Amen. Mercy sees you through such kind eyes. Mercy always sees through the eyes of love and great value. Great value. If we knew the value that God puts upon us, we'd run so much more quickly for his grace and mercy. He loves you so much, so very much. God bless you. God bless you. And may you go into great depths of mercy and kindness and may it set you free to understand more fully the goodness and the love and the kindness of our gentle Savior. Amen.